This is Jameson from Arrival of Autumn, and you're watching Richard Metal Fan. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Richard Metal Fan Interviews. This is episode number 134. It's No Beard Richard in the house. And today we're going to be talking to Jameson Friesen. He is the lead singer for the band Arrival of Autumn, a metalcore band based out of Canada. Today we're going to be talking to him about what got him into metal and pretty much talking about the history of Arrival of Autumn, including their new album album coming out on the 26th of may entitled kingdom undone which can be at a nuclear blast records and so without further ado let's go talk to jameson so what's up guys i'm here with jameson friesman of arrival of autumn so how are you doing today man good man how about yourself not too bad not too bad i'm glad we we're able to get this working i know we had technical issues for like 30 minutes but now we finally got things working yeah, we're we're live. We're rolling. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So kind of the format is I want to sort of like talk about like your journey as an artist from where you started to now and do like a rundown of your catalog as well as I want to talk about the new album. But before we go into that, take me back to Young Jameson. What were like the first bands that got you into metal? What made you want to be a vocalist? Yeah, uh, definitely Metallica. Uh, I remember seeing the video for enter sandman when i was like 10 or something and that definitely piqued my interest and uh going on from there i listened to a lot of lincoln park demon hunter yeah. Avenged sevenfold bullet from a valentine so uh definitely you know got into more aggressive music as i got older and uh those those were kind of the big the big bands of my preteen years that got me into the genre got me yeah. wanting to yeah, be in a band for me. So nice. Yeah, I, was, I think <laughs> awesome. we're talking like Linkin Park were like one of those first bands that got me into metal, like Hybrid Theory and Meteora still slap. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I go back to those albums all the time. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard like the like some of the, the unreleased B sides from like the Meteora twentieth anniversary box stuff? That sounds pretty good. Yeah, it does. It's uh I, I can't imagine it was an easy decision at the time to put those songs aside and and not include them in the record and i'm really glad we can finally hear them now yeah 20 years later we finally heard it <laughs> yeah right like i say say if it, they were like one of those first bands that got me into like harder sounding music before metal took over my life when i was like 10 years old yeah definitely because it was a lot of you know pretty mellow rock a lot of oldies a lot of 80s and uh not a lot of metal especially not you know death metal or anything like that so Bands like Lincoln Park were a, a gateway band for me into getting into death metal and, and shit like that down the road. Hell yeah. Yeah, and I agree for sure. So were you in any bands before starting up Arrival of Autumn or was Arrival of Autumn your first band? Uh, well, the first band I was in, I joined a thrash band in town called Tempest, uh, who are no longer active. I was the bass player. And wow. that's how I met Ty, our uh, drummer in Arrival of Autumn. Uh, we met in that band when we were like 16, 17, and then we decided to just start our own thing. Yeah. Yeah. And how'd you get to know the rest of the guys? I believe y'all formed 2011. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so Brendan and I were neighbors way back in like 2004, 2005, uh, when we were kids, and we really got into, uh, playing guitar at the same time we got into uh like metallica so from ages like i don't know i want to say like 10 to 15 brendan and i got to the point where we were learning entire metallica albums front to back and just hanging out and jamming along to metallica records for hours on end and uh so that's how I met Brendan. I met Ty in that other thrash band that we were in when we were teenagers. Um, and then our guitar player, Ryan, joined the band in 2017. Uh, we met him. He was in another band in the scene, and we poached him from that band. <laughs> and uh, our current bass player, Liam, he was in another band that we toured with, and we poached him from that band. So. <laughs> yeah. So you but Ty and Brendan and I go way back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, Brendan and I go back almost 30 years or sorry, almost 20 years at this point. 
and uh and ty and i go back uh a good a good 12 13 years by now so awesome it's awesome and so I believe the f the first thing to, that comes to mind with Arrival or Outridom was the Endless Night CP from 2012. Tell me about like that. Where was that recorded at? Yeah, so that was uh, recorded. We had a friend in town who had his own home studio. Uh, we recorded it there. He produced it. He was definitely uh, really massive for us getting into like becoming songwriters like he helped us shape our first few songs into kind of what they were produced our ep for us and uh we knocked that out i think we recorded that at the end of 2011 put it out at the beginning of 2012 if i'm not mistaken yeah yeah and what was that whole like like ep cycle like like did you just like toured around canada and stuff just western canada um we probably played like Edmonton, Calgary, Grand Prairie, Fort St. John, Prince George, <laughs> which is like Northern Alberta and BC. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So we got out a bit. Um, we mostly just toured Western Canada until 2019 was our first time really branching out. Yeah, I'm playing in like Toronto and Montreal and shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I guess, like, of course, the, the next up is, like, the debut full-length album, Shadows, in 2014. So what was, like, the thought process, like, going into making the debut full-length Arrival of Autumn album? Uh, you know, we just wanted to keep making music. <laughs> and uh, so we teamed up with another local producer for that one, uh, Bevan Booth. His band is called Devolver. I would definitely check them out. Um, he produced Shadows for us. We recorded most of it uh just at my house ty's house and, and bevan's house uh very much do it yourself uh we yeah just used all our own gear <laughs> it was uh it was a lot of fun i think i yeah it was like it was like 10 years ago so it's yeah. <laughs> hard to think back to the specifics but yeah we just wanted to keep pumping out music uh the band was gaining a lot of traction and so we were uh just keeping the ball rolling you know keeping that momentum going yeah and it's funny you just mentioned 10 years because next year will be the 10 year anniversary of shadows and kind of like like one question i'm always curious about is there a chance we can get a celebration of that somehow maybe do a tour you play it start to finish uh i don't know if we would go that crazy but we are talking about um re-recording a few songs off of it and putting out uh basically like a like an EP of our favorite songs off of it re-recorded to celebrate it. So yeah. that might, uh, that might happen here soon. Yeah. Call it 10 years in the shadows. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I just love, love that, that album. Like I just love like the screams, like you pretty much like make them very understandable. And then the drumming is great. And like, I just think that whole album is just perfect. One of the best like debut album, albums, especially in modern times. Awesome. That's fantastic to hear, dude. Thank you. Thank you. And what was that like touring cycle like for the fir first album? Because I know at that time you were still like independent. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the Shadows tour was like, I don't know, 10 shows across Western Canada. Uh, we played Alberta, BC. We went as far as like Victoria. I think we played Vancouver Island on that run um nice and yeah that was our first time going out for more than a few days at a time that was our first like couple weeks stint on the road and uh it, it was a grind you know it was our first time playing in a lot of places just trying to uh gain some new fans and uh we got to play funkies in vancouver on that tour which has since uh it's still a bar but it's not funkies anymore it used to be a really kick-ass metal bar yeah and they, like, uh the name or something yeah, they changed the name or something. So uh, we we got to play Funkies, which was really sick. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And then cut, going into your next album, Harbinger, in 2019, because you, usually with the debut album, you have like your entire life to write, and there's a lot of hype with the first album. When it came time for Harbinger, did you felt like pressure to follow up Shadows? Yeah, definitely. Um, 
And also, while we were in the demo process, we got the label's attention. Uh, so we didn't really plan on making another album. What we were going to do uh, was just cut an EP, a few songs, and put it out in like 2016, 17. And then we got the label's attention and they wanted, uh, or, or, you know, they asked if we wanted to do an album. Uh, so we added a couple of years to the process and uh, just ended up doing a full length, <laughs> which, uh, which we're really glad we got the opportunity to do. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's like a four year gap between Shadows and Harbinger. Was it just you wanted to like hone your craft? Uh, it was honestly more working out the, uh, yeah, like the songwriting took time, but like we were working out the record deal. We were, um, I, like we, we almost like, we didn't really rebrand, but it was like the closest thing you can do to a rebranding without changing your name and, and all that fun stuff, right? We basically reinvented Arrival of Autumn um you know added another member i switched to just doing vocals instead of vocals and guitar and we kind of kicked the songwriting up a notch uh to be a little bit more technical uh so that took time to you know nail down and and get ready to unleash yeah and i know you also got signed to like nuclear blast blast Class. What was it about them that that made you guys want to sign with them compared to like other other labels that you got offers from? Uh, that that they were the label that you know we always wanted to be working with. Like, uh, they're they're so massive, they're so awesome. The bands that they work with are awesome. Um, it, it was a no brainer. We had to we had to sign with them. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, and then eventually, once you got signed to Nuclear Blast, did you like start like tour touring like more and playing in like other places? Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, like the signing opened up a lot of doors for us. Uh, we got a lot of attention from people who, you know, might not have given us a second thought if we weren't signed. Uh, so yeah, just off like the Harbinger album cycle, we toured with uh, Skin Lab, Soulfly, and Unearth. And uh, in flames and red, so yeah. that was massive for us. Those opportunities would not have been on the table for us <laughs> had we not, <laughs> um, you know, gotten that record deal. I I don't think anyway. So yeah, and I remember seeing you all on that in flames toward the end of 2019. That was like the only time I've seen you guys. I'm hope, hoping you all play in like Atlanta again soon. Oh, sick! We were actually just in Atlanta uh, with Heathen just oh. a couple months ago. Oh damn! How did I miss that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But we'll definitely be back again. Yeah, let's hope so. But now we uh, have... Paladin was on the bill that night too. They're oh, fucking sick. Oh shit! I know Paladin. I've actually interviewed them a couple couple years ago. Nice. Yeah, they were awesome. Sick dudes, and they put on a really fun show. Yeah, and I also played with uh, your fellow Canadians and Unleash the Archers from Vancouver. Also cool people. I've interviewed them them a bunch. Wicked. Yeah, those that band's awesome. Yeah, have you ever did like shows with them? Uh, no, we've never played with Unleash the Archers. Yeah. yeah, Maybe yeah. one day. Yeah, it would be an interesting bill. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, like no, they're killing album. it. They're doing great things. Hell yeah, and I know I know they're still working on their new album because I could imagine like, like, like that bill could attract like different fan bases, like the power metal fan base and then the metalcore fan base. And so I just think it would just be perfect, eclectic bill. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, but then now we have like the new arrival of autumn album, which comes out on the twenty sixth. Kingdom Undone. But then, what, what what was like the whole writing and recording process making the new album? Uh, so we started writing it when we were on tour in twenty nineteen. Uh, we like uh, our guitar player Ryan just always had his demo station. Uh, we had a day off at a truck stop with a Denny's attached to it. And he posted up in the Denny's with his demoing rig for like eight hours straight. They just kept oh, bringing wow. him fucking coffee. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> he was in there like all night. <laughs> like It was awesome. Uh, so yeah, we started writing it in 2019 while we were on tour. Uh, and then 
the Harbinger tour cycle got cut short because of COVID. So then we just went right into the next album. And uh, well, that's not entirely true. We did do the Bark at the Moon cover uh, yeah. in between as well. Um, a hell of a cover. By but the way. yeah, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, we were just like, all right, let's let's make another record, I guess. And uh, so we had it all demoed out. We hired Mark Lewis and he came up here in August of 2021 is when we recorded the bulk of that record uh, right here in my house. Um, everything but the drums, the drums were done at Mark's studio in Nashville. All right. And with this album, did you want to try something new that, than what you did on Harbinger? Yeah, definitely. We wanted to try some new sounds. We wanted to, uh, you know, take our writing to the next level, which I think we did. And uh, yeah, like what we've come up with is, I think, a darker album uh, that kind of ventures off into uh, some some different, you know, taste of different genres throughout it. And it's uh, definitely a step up from Harbinger. Yeah, it's definitely. I've like I've heard like the couple songs like Ghosts and Scars. Like they just sound like probably the heaviest you sound yet. But yeah, and I just think it's fucking great, great. And like what, pretty much like what inspires you to like write th these songs? Do they fit? Yeah, just comes from, like naturally and organically, or do you put yourself into like a mind frame in order to let the creative juices flow? Uh, basically, I. It's like uh it's like a like a stress reliever. It's like a way to get these thoughts that you, you can't get rid of them, so you write them down and then it helps you get rid of them. <laughs> and uh so like there's you know always stuff that I get fired up about or that's on my mind. Uh that that's kind of what gets my creative juices flowing when it comes time to write. Um and uh yeah so for this one we were stuck at home we couldn't tour uh and we were angry about it <laughs> so it was perfect <laughs> yeah yeah and i just love like like the overall theme of also the album um but i'm like what is like the theme of the album because i know like harbinger kind of feels like the weight of the world world but for you in your opinion what is like the overall theme for kingdom undone uh it's kind of like a secret to Harbinger in a, in a way it's not a concept album but generally it's a sequel to Harbinger. Harbinger was like yo stuff is stuff is going south and then the world went south and so for Kingdom Undone we were like see how it's all going south? <laughs> so we just kind of kept elaborating on the themes of like corruption in everything around us and just you know classic themes that have been sung about in metal since the 80s 70s even of you know political structures are failing the average person religion is poison that kind of stuff you know like just still trying to <laughs> drive those topics and uh and keep that discussion alive yeah and one thing to note is i also love the the lyrics on on here how do you you come up with like the lyrics do you ever try i think it's all i think i might have also asked this but but when it comes to like making the lyrics do you ever have to like put yourself into like a mind frame as well as to, like making music or is that almost kind of like completely different i i definitely have to you know put myself in a place where I, there's no distractions there's um like focus time where i'm really just trying to come up with the best possible um melody and and lyrics that match it that do the song the best justice i can you know just trying to create the best music that i can when i'm when i'm in the writing mode and i also love like the way you you could scream and then you also can go right into the clean singing how do you like figure out like okay i need to scream here or, okay i need to sing here uh, I prefer screaming, <laughs> so it's really easy to find out, uh, like to, to figure out where the screaming belongs, because the answer is all the time, <laughs> but um, we do like our hooky, melodic 
choruses as well. So um, it's a tried and true structure in metalcore, you know, sing the chorus, scream everything else. That's kind of what we stick to. Uh, on this album, we do have some variation from that formula. Um, but yeah, we just love to sing the hook and everything else is just aggressive. <laughs> All right. Right. When it comes to like this, the screaming and singing, does it also kind of like evoke sort of like a certain like emotion behind it? Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, you can, um, like in, in Ghosts, for example, you, you can't capture that if you're screaming. Um, like that, that chorus just has such a melancholic, uh, depressing vibe to it that uh we knew it had to be sung uh so moments like that it's it's definitely a no-brainer um but then you know when there's crazy riffs and blast beats you gotta scream over it you know <laughs> so you just yeah. gotta service the song <laughs> Yeah, because I feel like the like screaming ha like evokes like a certain emotion that, that I feel like clean singing can and sort of vice versa. So I feel like you you have like the best of the both worlds. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I love being able to do both. And it's uh yeah, it's it's a lot of fun writing to the music that the the guys in the band come up with. All right. And I got two more questions for you if that's okay. Definitely. Okay. Okay. And when in terms of like playing li live, live is there what is there like any differences between playing live and versus like recording an album or album or they're almost kind of like the same? Uh no, they are quite different. Um, when you're live, you know you've got the energy of the crowd. Um, rehearsal for live is um, very different as well. Like. You're, you're training to be able to perform, you know, 30 to 60 minutes worth of material nonstop. Uh, so by the time you've rehearsed for the tour, you're ready to go. So you get up on stage and you just, you just do what you expect to happen. When you're in the studio, you're changing stuff on the fly. You're trying to get the best take possible you find yourself repeating the same line, <laughs> you know, over and over trying to get the, the best take. Um, I find it's a lot easier to burn out in the studio just because it's not something that you've trained your voice to do um, when, you're, when you're crafting new lines and then performing rehearsed material so yeah it's definitely a much different uh much different experience and uh it always makes the studio kind of you know a little bit stressful but at the same time you got to have fun with it and uh you gotta you know just uh make the most of of, of that process as well right and and i know you you have like now three album albums now now it's got to be like harder to put like a set list, like the more albums you have. Yeah, definitely. Um, the set list for our upcoming headline tour is going to be pretty awesome. Uh, it's like 50, 50 Harbinger kingdom undone uh, with the bar cover thrown in. So massive spoilers for anyone coming, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, it was really fun to be able to be like, we're playing new material finally. Yeah. Uh, instead of just Harbinger stuff. Yeah, and they're pretty sure there's always got to be, like, that one fan that would want, like, the raw, deep cut from, like, the Endless Night CP. <laughs> yeah, we haven't played anything off of uh, Endless Nights in ages, uh, even Shadows. I don't think since, I think 2019 was the last time we played anything off Shadows. Yes. All right. And sort of in the end, to sort of wrap things up, what's next for Arrival of Autumn? I know you mentioned you got a headlining tour coming up and we got the new album coming on the 26th. Is there just anything else with Arrival of Autumn that you'd like to plug? Uh, yeah, uh, basically that's it. A new album, Kingdom Undone, comes out May 26th. Our, our, 
our West Coast tour starts on the same day in our hometown of Grand Prairie, Alberta. And uh, the dates are uh, on our social media right now. So check it out. See if we're coming to your town. And we hope to see you there. And hopefully you like the album. Awesome. So everybody, Jameson from Arrival of Autumn. See you next time.